I'm sure you can agree that buying a home has been a great investment for a whole lot of people. If you just take a look at the appreciation values over the last 20 years, it's absolutely incredible. And as you see that almost every year, your rent, if you're renting, has gone up. So it makes all of the sense in the world, you guys, to go ahead and purchase a home. However, I've talked to a lot of buyer prospects over the years, and based on their questions and my experience with them, a lot of them didn't know how to even get prepared to buy a home. So that's what we're gonna do in this video, show you how to get prepared to buy a home. Hello again, this is Daryl Williams. I'm a real estate broker with Win Win World Tours here in Southern California. Thanks for watching this video. Let's talk about some of the myths and misconceptions with purchasing a home. A lot of people that I've spoken with for the first time, they believe that it's difficult to purchase a home. They believe that it's difficult to get approved for a loan. In my 27 years of experience, that is not the case. It is not as difficult as most people perceive it to be. So let me tell you how to basically prepare yourself to buy a home. Here are the things you should do prior to calling the real estate agent, prior to looking around on the internet for a house to purchase. Here are the major things that you should do. Let's start with having a job. In order to purchase a home, in most cases, the lender requires you to have been working for at least two years. You would not have to have been working at the very same job. It could be different employers, different lines of business. But what you need is a two-year work history. And a lot of us have that. You could work for a fast food restaurant. You could work in a gig economy type of job. The big thing is that you've been working for at least a couple of years. So that's a major factor right there. Now, if you have a college degree and you're directly out of college, let's say you graduated, I should say, you don't need that two-year work history. You need a job, but you don't need that two-year work history. The next thing is you need to have decent credit. Now, if you think about it, just in life, if you are at least 21 years old, you know you've been through some experience where you know that your credit is important. So you got a two year work history, you got decent credit. Now, the better your credit score is, by the way, the cheaper it is for you to purchase a house because you don't need to concern yourself with what we call discount points. Basically, that's prepaid interest. If you have a decent credit score, let's say 640, 650, you'll be able to purchase a home without a problem at all. If you have a good credit score, let's say 700 to 730, you'll be able to get some of the best interest rates available without any discount points. If you have excellent credit, let's say over a 740, 
FICO score, you, you will be able to get the lowest interest rates possible. The lower the interest rate you can get, the more of a house you'll be able to afford. Thus, the more of a loan the lender will make to you. So, there are some of the critical parts right there. Two-year work history. Decent credit score. Now, if you have those two things, you could purchase a home. There are a lot of first-time home buyer programs available. And as you've heard me talk about before, some with no money down and no closing costs. You're going to need some reserves. But that's a huge big deal. No money down, no closing costs. There are FHA programs with 3.5% down. There are grants that will help you in purchasing a home. There are conventional loans available to you with as little as 3% down. What you need to do is just make sure as you move forward that you're preparing yourself appropriately to purchase a home. Preparing yourself appropriately is making sure that you pay your bills on time, that you live within your means, and you are consistent with those efforts. Okay, paying your bills on time, maintaining your credit, maintaining employment, and making sure that the income that you earn is sufficient enough to qualify for the loan that you need. Now, what I mean by that, the income that you earn, always keep in mind, you could have co-signers. You could have non-occupant co-signers. That means that the person doesn't have to live there. Someone else that doesn't live in the property can assist you in buying it. But the point I want to make here is that your income is roughly about three times your monthly payment. I've heard over the years a lot of people express concern about not, not wanting to get in over their head as it relates to the monthly payment. Watch this, you guys. The lenders aren't going to let you get in over your head. They don't want you to get in over your head, of course. The lenders are not in the business to own properties. Sometimes people think that, oh, the lender wants to take my house. They don't want your house. They simply want to be able to sell your house and get their money back in case you default or you decide not to pay them back. So my point here is you want to make sure you have sufficient enough income. So if the monthly payments is going to be roughly about $2,000 a month, you need to earn about $6,000 a month. And when I say you, it could be you, your wife, or whomever else that's purchasing the home. So in a nutshell, there it is. The critical things you need to prepare yourself to purchase. And I say prepare because if you don't make sure you pay all of your bills on time. I've met a lot of people that liked to wait to the very last second to pay their bills. If you don't make sure you pay your bills on time. If you don't make sure that you stay gainfully employed then it's going to be difficult for you to purchase a home. But in general, it is not difficult to purchase a home. Most of the difficulty in purchasing a home lies within the mind of a lot of people. It's their perception. It's not the reality. 
So I want to encourage you, young folks, and I've even met a few older people that are in their 60s and 50s and things of that nature that have never purchased a house before. They've rented all of their lives. And you don't have to be one of those persons. Now, I have asked those people, I'm curious, why hadn't you never purchased a home at this stage of your life? And in a few cases, the answer kind of surprised me. They said they'd never met any real estate people that they trusted. And I'm here to tell you, for the most part, you guys, real estate people are out trying to simply earn a living. They're not out trying to, to make your life miserable. And maybe in some other video, I'll talk about how to choose the right real estate person. But for right now, the most important part you need to do is get your mind in the right mindset in order to purchase. I want to know that you can. All you need is decent credit. The better your credit score, the lower your monthly payment, the less it's going to cost you to purchase. So you need decent credit and you need a job and you need sufficient amount of income. If you do that, you could purchase a home. So if you don't have any of those together, start right now. Start right now. Establish a goal. And within a year or so, you'll be in the position where you're ready to pick up the phone, call a real estate person, and say, listen, I want to purchase my first house, and you're ready to go. All you need to do is listen at that point very carefully. Educate yourself as much as possible on the process. And then allow a professional realtor to go ahead and negotiate that house for you. There it is. That's how to prepare to purchase a house. I'm Daryl Williams. This is Win Win Rule Tours TV. If this video has been of value to you, please like it and smash that subscription button. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.